G'day guys, down here on the Pumice Stone Passage on a chilly winter's morning. Just looking for a feed of flathead, maybe some tailor. Um, near the bottom of the tide now, with the tide turn, and once that tide starts pushing in, we'll start looking at a couple of different areas where we can usually guarantee a fish or two. Uh, heading down at the moment, down towards the mouth of the, the passage there, there's an area I like to call the gutter. Um, bottom of the tide um, coming up probably in the next half hour. Um, got some good fish out of there, 80 is a lot of numbers of smaller fish too. Um, so we'll poke down there and have a bit of a look and fish over the bottom of this tide. So chasing flathead in the shallow water, um, over the last few years we've sort of got it down to a fairly fine art. Um, definitely the lighter litres um, going down, you know, sort of from 16 pound to 12, sometimes 10, even 8 when they're getting very, very touchy. Uh, light weights, uh, quarter weight, quarter ounce would be the absolute maximum that you'd, you'd ever use. Um, one sixth and even one eighth weights. Um, I, I sort of go from using shads and, and, and prawn imitators all the time. That some days, depending maybe on the moon phase, or, or it's, it's hard to really know, but you just go through your different um, lures in your box until you find something that you sort of, you feel confident in. Um, I've got at least a dozen sort of go-to lures, um, sort of from the two and a half inch prawns up to about four inch shads. Um, you know, colour-wise, the debate's out. I've caught them on every colour. Um, probably, again, just whatever you feel confident with. Um, they're the sort of, the, that's the sort of starting blocks. Um, technique is another one, you know, like I've, um, I've seen every, every technique used over the years and I like a, a fairly <clears throat> aggressive approach to it really get the lure ripping and flicking and moving, um, it, it tends to work for me. And the lighter weights and the really aggressive approach, you'll, you'll feel the bite on the drop, you know, the flat it'll grab it as it's sort of heading back to the bottom. As um, soon as you feel anything strike, um, you know, not too hard, especially with the lighter leaders, because you can actually bust off on strike. Um, but, you know, the flat is of a pretty hard mouth, so you've got to punch that hook home. Um, you don't need to use heavy gauge hooks. We're only running sort of six and eight pound braids and light leaders, flat it out, the hardest fighting fish in the world. Um, other than that, you know, with the soft plastics, there's other techniques that we've been dabbling with. The big swim baits is a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, definitely much, much, much bigger, bigger fish. Um, also we can troll. Not much of a fan of trolling in the passage um, due to the weed problem that we've got here, but in other areas it's a really, really, really great way to um, cover ground effectively. Vitally important that you get these shads and baits rigged as straight as you can. I'm a bit of a fan of these TT headlocks. They really hold the bait on well. Like so. When it comes to catch sense, um, I've used all of them and I'm pretty confident in saying that they all work. Um, I don't think that it makes the lure taste much better the fish. I'm a firm believer that it actually makes the lure not taste like human. It sort of um, masks our scent a little bit more, which is probably contrary to the regular belief with it. Best retrieve is, you know, long searching sort of casts, 
Up current, down current, doesn't really matter if your retrieve's right. Wait for your line to go slack, that means that the lure's rested on the bottom. As Soon as you see it lay, then start your, your jig, one, two, three flicks, whatever you feel confident with. But as long as you give it a nice aggressive sort of movement, that darting action can sort of startle and wake up flattered that are pretty much not interested um, at some stages of the tide. Uh, a slower retrieve doesn't seem to elicit the same response. Um, so yeah, but there's room for experimentation. Just, just keep trying until you find something that works for you. But vital to follow that line down and wait for that tap. Even the big fish will tap it very, very gently at times when they're not really in an aggressive mood. Might just move us up a little bit. Um, I like fishing sometimes against the current, which is sort of not the most popular technique, but I find that it, especially when the fishing's slow, it gives the lure a little bit more hang time. Um, sort of tempt a, 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 a not interested fish into have, actually having a bite. Almost at the bottom of the tide now, um, water sort of stopped, southwesterly's just started to flick up, rippling the water a little bit, but we've got a nice drain here, features like that very often will hold a fish um, as the water drops out or the bait pushes off that bank um, and the flathead will, you know, very predictably will be in attendance, um, so they're always worth a few extra casts, you know, um, sort of left and right of the drain, see if you've got a fish holding on point. There we go, just like that. Only a rat. Go back and grow. Let's do that again. This one might be a keeper. Oh yeah, nice fish. Ah, oh, done him. That was uh, possibly over 50. It, um, good case like we've been fishing here over the bottom of the tide and it's been very 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 quiet just start to get that change in the tide and all of a sudden bang fish start feeding it's the trigger just a little bit of movement get some chewing very early rising tide down in this neck of the woods while generally not regarded as a great time to fish for here it seems to be quite consistently good the run out tide doesn't fish as well um, where at the southern end of the passage, I, I do the complete opposite tides and, and, and have the same sort of success. So, you know, every, every area's got um, its own personality. You just got to figure it out over a few years. Just keep trying and trying different moon phases. It's been very cold this morning. Um, I've always found that, especially on these cooler mornings, we've had a bit of a cold snap, um, that the fish don't, aren't as active very, very early. They, um, they need basically a little bit of warming up. They need a little bit of love. Um, as that sort of sun gets up, they'll, you'll find the fish will come right up into the shallows and feed. Um, so don't be scared to fish down into 30 centimetres of water. Um, often I find too that those areas are good to fish because in heavily boated areas like the passage, you don't get as much traffic. The fish, you know, um, are, are still quite happily sitting in that shallow water. Whereas if you're in the, you know, the, the busier areas with boats buzzing over them, you've got to fish quite a bit deeper. There's the rat. Come on. Don't want to catch these things all day. Another thing I like to, to see in these sort of shallow areas and there's a relationship that I don't really quite understand is the flathead and the, the stingrays, when you start seeing a lot of stingrays, you're generally in an area that's going to hold the flathead. They sort of feed, I suppose, on, on similar things. A technique that I've been using, which is a bit of a laugh for a few years, is you'll see big stingrays cruising, just rolling along. 
Um, and quite similar to cobia with uh, manta rays offshore, there'll be a tendant flathead following them. So if you see a big stingray, don't be afraid to cast near it, behind it, because my theory is that as the stingray cruises, he starts to spook all the, the small fish and the prawns and the flathead, you know, sort of, sort of just taking advantage of the disturbance and just darting out and getting a free feed. So a, little, a good little trick to keep up your sleeve um, in, the, in the shallower areas. Another good technique I really enjoy and have sort of been experimenting with is fishing back, back down behind the boat on the, um, on, you know, back up towards the boat against the tide, which is sort of not a popular opinion amongst a lot of flathead fishermen, but um, I think that it gives the lure that good long drop and fall in front of the fish's face, um, gives them a good long time to, to look at it. And at times it's, we've found that it's been out fishing all the other traditional methods. So another little good trick to keep up your sleeve. This, these sort of gutters with these melon holes are just absolutely perfect for the flathead, sort of one and a half to two metres. You know, deep green gutters running all the way through it. The flathead will sit in the deeper, darker water and then just burst out. So bringing that lure back up against the current, slowly wafting it down, especially on the lighter jig heads, um, can sometimes, you know, really, really sort of elicit a good bite. It's stubborn, this fish. One flathead. Probably closer to 50, that one. So there's a nice eating size flatty, sort of probably about 48 centimetres. So I'd say he's gonna sit in the esky for someone's dinner. Folks, didn't get you the big flathead I was hoping to get for you today, but we've ended up with a feed and a, and a lot of other sort of smaller unders. We might do this again next time, see if we can get you that big girl.